Welcome back students to the video lecture series. I am Adil Mansuri from Civil Engineering Department of LJ Institute of Engineering and Technology. So in the previous video, we discussed about different types of pumps and layout of the pump in a water treatment plant. Okay. So let us now move ahead. So today we will start with the design of pumps. Design of pump means to find out the capacity of the pump required to deliver specific quantity of water against specific head. Head means height. Okay. So, how much quantity of water is required to travel or transfer up to how much height then that particular capacity is known as the design. Okay. So, design of pumps can be divided into two parts. First one is to find out the total head against which the pump has to operate. Right? That is the total height up to which the water is to be pumped or any fluid is to be pumped. And the second is the total power requirement. Okay? So, first one is the height and second one is the total power requirement. Or it can be also said that the capacity of the pump or the size of the pumps required and the number of pumps required plus the standby pumps, standby pumps. Okay. So total head or lift against which the pump has to work. The total head or lift against which pump has to work includes suction lift or head that is suction height discharge or delivery lift or head right and total loss of total loss of head due to friction entrance exit fitting etc in the suction and rising mean right so you can find out that how much head is there that is from suction and discharge head and also the loss that occurs in the pipe during the transmission so if hs is the suction head HD is the delivery head and if HL is the total loss of head due to friction, entrance exit, etc. Then the total head against which the pump has to work is given by H equals to HS plus HD plus HL. Okay. So talking about the suction head, it is the difference between the lowest water level and the pump. Discharge head or delivery head, it is the, is known as the difference between the point of discharge or delivery and the pump. Generally, only the frictional losses are considered for the design as minor losses are very small and if the length of the pipe is greater. So, dear students, you will get a better clarity when I will nomenclature this figure. Right, so here you can see that this is the pump, right? This is the pump casing, right? This is the point of discharge, right? This point is point of suction, right? So the difference between the pump and the point of suction will be known as suction head or HS, right? And the difference between the pump and the point of discharge is known as HD or delivery head. Right students? So I hope this is clear to you. 
So let us move ahead. Frictional losses can be found out by Darcy Weisbach equation and Darcy Darcy's equation is given as HF equals to 4 FL V square by 2 GD or F dash L V square by 2 GD, right? So L is the length of the pipe. V is the diameter of the pipe. V is the velocity of flow. F is the coefficient of friction. But when 4F is replaced by F dash, then F dash is known as the frictional factor, and the value of frictional factor varies between 0.02 to 0.075. Okay. So let us now talk about the power required by the pump or capacity of the pump. So the horsepower of the pump can be determined by the calculating the work done by the pump in raising the water up to the height of h, right? So let pump raise W kg of water to height h meter. Then the work done. By the pump will be equals to weight into height, right? If I replace weight with the density into this charge, then it will be equals to gamma Q into H, where gamma is the unit weight of water, and Q is the discharge to be pumped in meter cube per second, and H is the total head in meter. Okay. So the formula to find out the water horsepower W H P will be equals to gamma Q H upon 75, and if you need to find out the brake horsepower, then that will be equals to water horsepower by efficiency. So that will be equals to gamma Q H upon 75 eta. Okay. So let us now talk about the number of pumps size and standby unit. So pumping unit at water works are generally not operated at full capacity, right? And that too at all times. Since the efficiency of pump unit varies with load, it is a usual practice to design a pumping station such that some of the pump units. can be operated at full capacity at all the time hence two three or four pumps are installed the sizes of these pumps can be fixed by considering the demand and available storage okay thus there will always exist some standby capacity to take care of the repairs and the breakdowns Clear? Generally, hundred percent standby capacity to take care against average demand and thirty-three percent to fifty percent standby capacity against the peak demand is considered sufficient and may therefore be provided at the pumping station. Okay. Let us talk about the rising mean. So rising mean is the pipe through which the pumped water is sent further to the next unit for treatment purpose. Water flows in this pipe under high pressure and flow is also turbulent. Here the frictional loss in the pipe is more due to high velocity. Pressure pipes are designed such that overall cost of the project should be lowest possible both from maintenance and constructional point of view okay so you can have a look at the picture right so here you can see at the bottom that is the intake right and from intake or the source right it is transferred to the water treatment plant clear
So next topic of discussion is economic diameter of the rising mill. For pumping a particular fixed discharge of water, there are two options. It can be pumped through bigger diameter pipeline and which will allow lower velocity or through a lesser diameter pipeline which will allow high velocity. So if the diameter of the pipe is increased, it will lead to higher cost of pipeline. On the other hand, if the pipe diameter is reduced, then the velocity would increase, which will lead to higher frictional head loss and will require more horsepower for pumping, thereby increasing the cost of the pumping. Also, the cost of fittings will increase, right? So, for obtaining the optimum efficiency, it is necessary to design the diameter of the pumping main such that overall cost will be economical, both that is initial as well as the maintenance cost. Clear? And the diameter which provides such optimum condition is known as economic diameter of the pipe. Okay? So, an empirical formula given by Lee is commonly used for determining the diameter of pumping or rising mean, where D equals to 0.97 to 1.22 under root of Q, where D is the economic diameter of pipe in meters and Q is the discharge to be pumped in meter cube per second okay so let's talk about the design of rising main so first one is the head loss in the rising main so the total head loss in the rising main can be found out using Darcy's raised wedge equation or Hazen Williams equation from Darcy's equation HF equals to 4 FL V square by 2 GD or f dash and v square by 2 gd that we already know right and from hazen williams equation v equals to 0.85 ch r raised to 0.63 s raised to 0.54 where v is the velocity of flow s is slope of hydraulic gradient line and that will be equals to HL by L that is head loss by length of the pipe. Okay. R we already know that it is known as the hydraulic mean depth, right? That is equals to A by P. So if pipe is running full, then R will be equals to A by P that is wetted area by wetted perimeter that is pi by 4 D square by pi D and that will be equals to D by 4. CH will be considered as the Hazen Williams coefficient which depends on age, quality and material of the pipe. Okay. So dear students, that's the end. We will be starting with the numerical of the rising name in the next video.